resilience. Just to give you a sense of where we are, the plan came out in the summer. So, you know, we've had a few, we had a few months to sort of rest. Well, we had to regroup and, uh, and then get busy. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna implement this plan. Um, so land use, natural resources and biodiversity, just some of the things that are underway or done is the Senja Kentucky Pond Salt Marsh Migration Study. We've already um, mapped the migration um, and the structures in the migration zone. And this month we got a grant from the MV Community Foundation to identify septic systems in the marsh zone. Because um, as the sea rises, the groundwater is gonna rise and the septic systems, low-lying septic systems could fail and impact the salt marsh and the water quality in the ponds. Um, Dan's been working on biochar demonstration project to evaluate the use of biochar in so many um, different areas that will be beneficial to the um, to the island in general. Um, planning's underway for that. Um, we've established an all island conservation commission, and one of our goals is to update the town's wetlands regu bylaw regulations. Um, a draft policy has been completed for a, a, an MVC DRI flood risk area policy. Um, we're working on, right now I'm working with the towns to update their floodplain bylaws to be consistent with the National Flood Insurance Program, uh, which is a requirement. And then after town meeting, hopefully all the towns have done that, we can be, begin collaboratively working to update the bylaws um, using current climate science. Um, and um, get the floodplains regulated in a, in a better way. And we are gonna be filing for an MVP grant this year. Um, we're gonna be looking for funding to do um, terrestrial and aquatic vegetation mapping. This is laying the groundwork for an MVP grant we're gonna apply for next year, which is the overarching goal of a, of a greater of a visioning and land use management um, overview of the island, you know, to make sure that what we're doing in one area isn't affecting what we're doing in the other area. So this is sort of a um, baseline for that. And it accomplishes some of the goals of the plan. In transportation infrastructure and waste, we, we've developed a way to sort of liaise with the Steamship Authority. We're gonna be monitoring their agendas and staff members will be attending when there are relevant issues at their meetings. Um, we can talk, um, Ben has got all the information on the supply chain study that's about to begin. And um, the Food Waste Initiative is looking at applying for an EPA grant for a, um, drum composting facility at the Oak Bluffs landfill. In public health and safety, um, uh, vulnerable populations database is underway. Uh, we're communicating with the emergency professionals on what type of CERT actions would benefit them if we're gonna have more island um, community emergency response teams. Um, the Dukes County Health Council has established a climate subcommittee um, and Ruth McDermott has volunteered to help with um, implementing the goals of that subcommittee. She's a Villanova professor and a director of the Mid-Atlantic Center for Children and the Environment. She's a nurse and an expert on climate change and health, and she has a house here on the island. Um, and a grant application has been filed to fund a survey of health professionals to understand their knowledge of climate-related health issues so that if they aren't up to speed, we can work on getting them up to speed. And uh, bilingual education is underway. Uh, tick information sheet's been issued in um, Portuguese. Food security. Um, the farmer's market will be accepting the um, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program this year. Uh, IGI and the Fisherman's Trust are collaborating on locally harvested seafood for those in need. There's been some progress on indigenous food production. In terms of food security, IGI secured kitchen space for year-round food processing, storage and distribution, and they're working to secure more centers. And um, we're, there is also work underway to determine an accurate count of the year-round population, uh -huh. which will be valuable for many things. Uh, no actions yet been taken on economic resilience. Um, a couple of miscellaneous items, we're seeking funding and planning for Climate Action Day this year, which will be Sunday, May 7th. 
and we're still giving introductory presentations on the climate action plan um, uh, uh, with local organizations and groups. And finally, um, last month, we took a road trip with representatives from the offices of Senators Markey, Warren, and Representative Keating. Thank you, Dan, for organizing that. Um, it was really great. We had these representatives looking at um, all these various areas where we were hoping to get some federal and state support to, uh, to address Beach Road, the Farm Pond Culvert, Chappie Ferry, wildfire issues in the state forest, the Menemsha Harbor Dock, and um, some good initiatives going on in Aquinnah and Chilmark in terms of energy transformation. So that's what I've got. And if anyone has any questions, I'm here. Great, thank you, Liz. That's actually really helpful to sort of see the progress. Um, there's a lot, those are a lot of good things that are happening. So that's that's nice. And it's nice to see that how the CAP plan sort of meshed in with a lot of already happening things and happening organizations. So it's really nice that the way this is all knitted together. Alan, yes. Yeah, um, Liz, can you just send those around? I think that's a great summary of yeah. what's going on and you okay. had to go pretty fast. <laughs> and I'd like to look at it again, thanks. Sorry. I'm told I talk too fast on Zoom. I'm sorry about that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't mean to be critical. No. <laughs> I just want to understand it. You know, at, at my yeah. age, you need to repeat things. So. <laughs> no worries. Liz, does that find its way onto the Vineyard Way website in some way as a summary of things that are happening? Is if you know who knows who goes to that website, that it'd be nice for people to see, like, well, oh, okay, these are things that are going on. I don't know if in, in that sort of format it will be, but we will be updating the website as we implement things at certain periods of time. So it will be there in one form or another. All right, great. Um, any other thoughts, questions for Liz? I don't know, Alan, if, or go ahead, Bob. Yeah, this is really uh, not directly related, Liz, but it's was triggered um, by your update. And the, the beginning idea is in what ways might we engage the preservation trust with the work of this task force? And that idea also is reinforced um, by something that, that Ben shared uh, with me and a few others uh, earlier this week on what the Nantucket Preservation Trust is doing in supporting the collection of C&D waste on Nantucket. Thought that was interesting. And I forwarded it to um, Nivette Previd at, um, at the trust. And from other conversations, and I don't know if this is true, I'm just throwing this out there. Um, I'm not sure the vineyard is prepared for an event like Ian, where there are multiple days where people are homeless, homeless and need to be housed. And this idea also was raised with Nivette Previd um, for um, properties for the Preservation Trust being a possible resource for housing homeless people for short periods of time in an event like Ian. And I think that conversation could be continued with her. Okay, thank you. Um, it would be interesting to know how that, where we fit those sorts of pieces into the CAP plan. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the plan, but where, it, maybe Liz, you know offhand, where in the CAP plan we do, do we talk about, do we talk about waste? Is that an, an issue that was, highlighted in the plan at all? Yes, the one of the themes is transportation infrastructure and waste. Um, I don't know that we specifically have an action about um, construction waste, but I know that you and I talked about including that in the plan and it's certainly something that needs to be addressed. Yeah, and, and just for everybody's sake, um, Bob Johnston and, and a few others um, have, have a group, I don't know what you guys are calling yourselves, Citizens for a Circular Economy, um, but it focuses on on our waste stream and, and, and other things. Um, and Liz and I are meeting later today with that group. So I think that's another um, group that'll be key in moving and moving forward on, on that issue, which is I think also a critical piece of our our puzzle here. Um, ben, I didn't. Oh, Kate. 
I was just going to say I didn't address the energy issues if Kate wants to take on them. Yeah, that's what actually I was going to ask Alan or Kate if they had any, if they wanted an update on energy on the energy group. Um, I was just going to say first in response to the idea of the preservation trust and shelters, um, I think that overlaps very strongly with the emergency manager work and um, the town work. So I I don't know about that. I, I, it's this, the emergency manager thing. They only want to certify certain shelters because they only have so much Red Cross support. There are um, ad hoc shelters designated in most of the towns. So I just, that would not be one of my top things to pursue. I think you get yourself into trouble. Um, I, at, in the, on the energy side of things, one of the things that overlaps with that is I've spent a good amount of time this fall looking into how prepared are we for a major weather event in terms of where the water and wastewater departments are. We do have a considerable number of generators and fuel tanks to back up the 12 well sites and the various lift pumps that you know are in the down island towns. Um, I have been pursuing another idea, which I'll, I'll tell you about if if uh, it goes anywhere with the Mass DEP to get a, a further level of resilience for the water and wastewater departments. Um, in addition, uh, Bob, you had sent out an email. There was an item in the in the energy part of the cap about forming a formal Eversource working group. And that has been done and we have met once. It has representation from each of the towns and the county. Um, some of the people in this call are part of it. And so far, all we've heard is just sort of a broad overview of how Eversource looks at um, loading profiles and various ways they analyze uh, electrical use and how they respond to it. We will have to get into much more specific topics with them. And that's the goal is that we would hear from them as the electrical grid demands are greater and greater as we move towards two times the electrical use that we use now, um, what's, what are Eversource's plans and how can we be sure in each of the towns that whatever they're doing is palatable to the towns. So for example, right now there's a, a group working on Middle Road and Chilmark because they don't like the way Eversource is wanting to um, add to the electrical wires along Middle, middle Road. So they're, they're trying to come up with a solution. Um, I've also met with the hospital. So I ended up, I met with the wastewater departments. I also met with the airport wastewater department. I met with the hospital. The hospital is looking at getting a very large uh, battery, and I don't know if they've chosen yet uh, what company to do it with. They they had various offers, and because they are now under the wing of Mass General, Brigham and Women's, um, they those people were coming down to help the hospital determine what was the best battery option for them, but. Um, the facilities manager at the hospital is really on top of this stuff, so that's very good. Um, so those are those are the main things. I guess the other thing I'd say is I, I'm trying to put together a, a grant proposal to have an event at the end of March called Ferries Now. And Ferries Now um, has the stamp of approval from the steamship. It would um, have speakers from Denmark, Washington State, Casco Bay in Maine, and they would present um, you know, what's happening to electrify ferries in other places. Uh, Dylan Fernandez has agreed to come and he would speak about what is the steamship's role in meeting the climate goals of 2050 that the state has set out. Um, the steamship will be there. Eversource has agreed to be there um, to talk about our own personal situation and what are the infrastructure challenges um, 
to moving towards electrification. Anyways, that's the idea. Um, I'm applying to the ED Foundation to fund the idea. And um, so that's that's what I've been doing. Um, in terms of the, a, a group of us worked together on comments to the Steamship's Alternative Propulsion Study uh, that Elliott Bay Design Group had prepared in May, and we sent them to the steamship in August. It's taken a while, but um, a, an invoice or a proposal has been approved by Bob Davis to have Elliott Bay answer those questions. It's taken quite a long time, but um, hopefully the process is now underway. That's my report for right now. All right, great. Thank you, Kate. Um, if anybody has any questions for Kate, go for it. But first, let's see Tristan and then Liz and then Steve. Yeah, so just briefly, um, which cuts across all things. I sent an article out, I guess, I don't know if you guys saw just real briefly on the Cape Cod, on the bridges to Cape Cod. And um, they now, since I sent that article out, um, they didn't get I guess it was a government grant, a large government grant. Uh, so I think that puts a monkey wrench. I know there was a meeting uh, and they have some plans that they've put out to the public on you know, bridge styles, et cetera. The point being for our infrastructure, this is as important to us as it is to the towns on the Cape. And I hope we, I'm gonna try and find out more how uh, we can uh, help advocate and I think strength in numbers maybe with towns on the Cape, but just something with regard to a lot of issues, including supply chain, <laughs> you know, that that uh, these bridges are very old and um, well beyond their lifespan and very expensive, obviously. Thanks, Tristan. Um, just go ahead, Liz. Yeah, um, just two quick things. Kate, uh, Kate it, that was a great report. I love your creativity, and and um, <laughs> it's really fun to hear you, your your thoughts. Um, and I just wanted to mention too, this is not in the climate action plan, but it's a really great project that um, John Harris, who was here, I, oh yes, he's still here. Hi, John, has agreed to um, go through the climate action plan and come up with good estimates for the cost of each of the actions, which will be incredibly valuable for for um, grant funding and for uh, fundraising. So thank you, John, for that. Yeah, that's great. Um, yes, Steve, go ahead. Yes, um, uh, Kate, that's a great report. I think that's a, the, um, <clears throat> the ferry program is a good idea, but I had had the sense from our earlier reports that the cost of electrified ferries is so astronomical that it's not, you know, it's not really on the horizon at this point. It's on the horizon because they have to meet that 2050 climate goal. Um, so it's a question of how they're gonna do it. It is extremely expensive. There is federal money um, for the Eversource piece, um, which requires huge battery storage at any port location. And when you look at Washington State, I think Washington State has 17 ports. So, you know, we don't have as many. We have, I think, five ports. Um, but I think the Eversource piece, there's some funding for it. The challenge is there isn't a lot of funding for the ferry part. But, you know, I think the rollout is going to be slow. I think they, uh, Bob Davis had mentioned to me that if he were able to get a, a fourth one of those freight boats, they've bought three. If he was able to get a fourth one, then they'd be able to have one in dry dock potentially being converted to at least being a hybrid electric ferry. And I think something like that is probably the path it would take where maybe one is done. It doesn't require onshore infrastructure and it just gets them moving in that direction to try it out before um, you know, larger things are done. I think the other thing is when they do need a new boat, 
although the electric propulsion costs a bit more, when you look at the cost of an overall boat, like if you don't just compare propulsion systems, but if you prepare the overall cost of building a new vessel, then the electric propulsion is not as significant. So, um, and of course, you know, like if you're Washington State, you've been looking very heavily at what are the emissions reductions when you move away from diesel propulsion. <laughs> and um, that, it, well, I didn't say that one of the things, and I'm not quite clear from an email I just got, but the idea was that this event would be held simultaneously in Falmouth and in Nantucket. I'm a little bit unclear from a message I just got whether Nantucket is going to want to hold it um, because they're the distance from Hyannis to Nantucket is so much longer that it's a, a good ways out before there would be electric propulsion for them. But there will definitely be one in Falmouth, and you can be sure that the main topic in Falmouth is the emissions aspect. Right. <clears throat> um, the the plumes have... of black smoke that get all over everything in Woods Hole are, is staggering. Right. I assume you're going to invite the Kerry and uh, other people to to be here, Marky. So, rather. Marky, I I sent a note to Marky's office. I haven't received a response. Um, ben might be able to get a better response, or Dan might be able to. Yeah, Marky was somebody we thought would be a, a good addition to that discussion. The other thing I think we need to pay attention to with the steamship authority is they're gonna go back to the legislature to raise the bond limit from the 100 million it is now to 125 million. We may want to advocate at the state level for something to be tied to electrification if the bond you know, rating you know, limit goes up. Why are they going up? Um, partly it needs to be to be able to fund the electrification of their fleet. Um, Kate, great work. Really, you're, you're you know, the, the, going back to that vision fellowship and getting a position in place, you can see the power of when somebody is able to do this as a full time job and not a volunteer. The, the as crowd. a half time job. Yeah, even as a half time job. Yeah, even, you know, so imagine a full time position, what somebody could do. So thank you. Um, Bob, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just. Ben, want to say bravo, Kate. And I would say these results are definitely the results that would come from a full-time person. Uh, so I just think what you're doing is very exciting. I, I would also um, see this as an opportunity for you to attach yourself at the hip of who's ever spearheading the strategic planning process for the Steamship Authority. Um, I think what will come out of this event and the conversations surrounding the event really, really need to influence that strategic plan. Yeah, well, and I think, I think that uh, is what they intend. I think that I talked to Steve Sayers about that, and I, I questioned what they did was instead of choosing Elliott Bay, and Elliott Bay's proposal was all about how to electrify the fleet and how to um, deal with the infrastructure, they chose a, a company that more sort of tries to change the culture of an organization and uh, get them in the mode of using strategic plans. And they feel confident in this company in part because Nantucket is using this company as well and gave them a very good recommendation. So um, they did say that the process the company is going to use is going to be directly influenced by the input they get from the various, you know, interested stakeholders. So I think that the Ferries Now event, you know, would be an important thing for, for the consultants to see the response. So I think one of the things I would want you guys' help with is we have the film center and the question would be try and get as many people to come in person as possible to show the steamship that this matters. Um, you know, it's one thing you you would be able to zoom in, but, uh, but one thing I'm considering is when ISO New England held their public meeting, their annual public meeting, they said you could only ask questions if you were there in person. 
Mm. And I wondered about doing that here, except for allowing Falmouth or Nantucket to ask questions, to encourage people to come to the film center. Because I think one of the things that will really help us is if the steamship sees, geez, this is important to people. Um, one unfortunate thing is that the event has to be on a weekday in the middle of the day. And the reason is Denmark and Washington state are nine hours apart. So to get them both to be able to speak means middle of the day. And the reason it will be on a weekday, it will either be a Thursday or Friday at the end of March is because Washington state refuses to speak on the weekends. <laughs> so just so you know, it'll be an... Another thing I'll be asking your help with is I'll be asking for volunteers to um, direct people to park in other locations because the film center is very <clears throat> worried. No one is allowed to use the Tisbury Marketplace parking during the day. So we have to park people. Um, if I can knock on wood, get permission from Ralph Packer to use his site near Moan Insurance. And one sort of Clarification too on and I don't know if, if hopefully everyone caught what Kate said there is that the Steamship Authority isn't really with this consultant creating a strategic plan as much as diving in and and looking at the culture of the Steamship Authority and how they need to change to be able to absorb <clears throat> strategic plans. So it's a bit of a shift, um, and I think we have to shift our thinking along along with that as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's totally true, because when I talked to Steve Sayers, he said there would be some sort of a one to three or three to five year thing. So I'm not quite sure, Ben, what we're going to end up getting. Yeah, so let's all pay attention. Uh, yes, Norm, I see your hand. Go ahead. Just very quickly, we have a new governor, and it might be good if you haven't done it already to be in touch with them about this event um, as they start out and they have responsibility for fulfilling the, the state's goals for reductions. What would you want me to say to them? Please come, please participate, Senate Representative. Why don't you invite the governor to convene it? I can try. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, you know, we, we had reached out to Dylan Fernandez who has pretty good connections now with this new administration. Um, so maybe that's something we'll, we can, See if he can he can squeeze out of the out of the administration, getting representation down. Okay, great, thanks. Um, all right, great. Any other questions for Kate or Liz on CAP and implementation and moving forward on things? All right. Otherwise, um, we've been sending we've been going around to the towns. We sent a letter to the towns uh, requesting information from the towns on how they want to use the Woodwell Risk Assessment Program that has been offered to the island. Um, we I I went to I guess I went to the Oak Bluffs and the Chilmark uh, Select Board meetings to help them sort of understand the program, um, and Woodwell has said, look, we we can do let's do three discrete topics um but you know what those are we need to decide and that's sort of where we are right now is figuring out which ones those are whether it's sea level rise drought precipitation um but i think liz at, at least in the at the oak bluffs meeting brought up a, a good point about you know what is that what are the things that we don't really know much about that we really need to know more about because i think Sea level rise, although it would be great to refine that, I think we have a fairly good handle on sea level rise. Um, things that I don't think we have a good handle on uh, are precipitation and drought events. Um, you know, at the commission, we're still using a 25 year storm threshold for planning purposes. Is that is that the right threshold? I think that's a, a really open question for us because it doesn't feel like it when you look around at the at the changes that we're seeing in weather. So extreme weather, I think, is one place where I think we could get more information. But I don't know if this group, um, if you guys have a sense, or Liz, if you have a better sense too, of you know how we may want to pick uh, pick pick one of the three or all you know these three in, in, in collaboration with the towns. Tristan. 
Yeah, two things, uh, just briefly before I get to the second thing. So in Mara Healy's uh, inauguration speech, um, she's creating like a cabinet level um, climate chief, I guess they called it, um, and working across government, you know, to with the cities and towns. So that's as soon as that's announced, I that's something maybe we should, you know, hi, welcome, you know. Uh, What's the word I want to use? Um, anyway, flattering, whatever the word is, we want to work with you, whatever. But jumping in early, uh, that I guess is what I'm trying to say. Then um, the second thing on, you know, with Woodwell, I mean, one of the things I keep harping on, I know it's me, but uh, is our uplands. And one of the issues is the management, uh, forest management right now is nil. I mean, there's some, you know, in the trust, I guess, since... Uh, state forest in a couple of sections which by the way the uh trying to find someone still uh i've been working through the county now to find out the legislation that needed to pass to be able to have someone to occupy the house you know at the you know in the middle of the state forest has been hung up in some glitch and i guess now needs to be according to kaylee moore talk to martina needs to be refiled um uh, so this just goes on and on and on. But having said that, I think management of our forests, um, and that includes the detritus and everything else that we see, um, that, you know, related also to drought that you mentioned, uh, I think is, is important and cuts across all towns. It, uh, just following up with that, Tristan, and I think you're right. I mean, you know, we look at, we look at how we manage our forests now, and, and it feels like we're not really doing the right thing. I, and I think there's a, a several things that we're studying that are gonna help this. Um, understanding how biochar is, can be a benefit to the island is, is one way to start managing that extra wood um, and, and fallen wood, but also the Woodwell study on carbon sequestration and how does, how does the forest actually heal itself and, and, and grow and process um, so that we're not just doing the things that we used to do in the past because that's the way we did them. And it really lends itself to working with the state to create an updated management plan of the, the state forest as an asset to the island and the state. What is the best use of that massive property for the island? Um, I think that's something that we should be thinking about as, as we move forward. Um, if we circle back to the Woodwell risk assessment, um, what, I guess, you know, the drought drought and precipitation would be something that would help us better understand the forest management as well. So that may be, you know, something that where we can say, look, if we get this data on this piece, it's going to be one of the pieces that helps us create a better management plan. Um, Liz, Dan, and then Steve. Yeah, um, I agree, Ben. I think um, precipitation is is something we don't know enough about and it's going to affect um, inland roads and infrastructure, agriculture, um, land use. Um, also drought, you know, we don't have enough information on that's going to impact our water quality, our um, aquifer uh, and wildfire also. And then I think the other issue that we really don't have a lot of information on that's really critical too is heat. Um, it's going to get really, really hot in the summer and it's going to affect the ability of outdoor workers to work it's going to affect outdoor recreation um it's going to have health impacts for people um i think that's really a critical issue that we need to learn more about as well yeah and, and i think it's that's where it can be really specific to us because we're, we do have the ocean as a cooling effect um and what you know how does that play out when you look at heat for the Northeast region, it's, it's different when you're in Worcester versus, versus the vineyard. Yeah. Um, so some sort of more pointed look at the vineyard would be helpful to understand. Also that. wildfire and heat is another issue. Yeah. Uh, Dan, go ahead. It, I, I wanna try to tie back Tristan's comments to the Woodwell study. Um, and it's another, you know, the forest management issue is another, I guess, reason why the vegetation mapping, the updated mapping will be, you know, really helpful. Um, there's an informal fire council group that meets monthly that MVC is a part of. 
we started attending after the community wildfire protection plan was released. And, you know, there's kind of a pro um, prescribed burn thrust that's part of that among some members and then other members, um, you know, favor more mechanical methods or, or grazing. Um, and you don't fall into one camp or the other, but, you know, we're trying to, what we're trying to do is figure out how to include the larger land conservation groups um, in a way that we can put together a program, a three to five year program where they can share more resources, whether it be, you know, key equipment, um, whether it be certified burn bosses, um, you know, municipal support from the fire departments to pull off some of the the larger undertakings when it comes to controlled burns um, or taking on you know larger swaths of um, mechanical mowing that type of thing so i think we're leaning towards a national wildfire or wild yeah wildfire defense grant is what we'll probably apply towards but to do that in a more kind of system um, systematic way with with partnerships i think is what that's what's been missing so that's sort of what the group is is that's what we're working towards yeah great thanks dan it'd be great to keep us um apprised of how that group starts formulating it because i think if if they need help understanding you know what is the right climate solution for forest management or or you know if we don't have the right information how do we get it it does feel like we're just sort of guessing at it at this point. And that's kind of the challenge we're facing in crafting a proposal is we really need the expertise and resources of, you know, a fire planner, um, someone who's really versed in, uh, you know, entomology, right? And, and how invasives and imperiled species insects will, um, you know, kind of evolve with, with, our, with our shifting climate. So it's really a hybrid of a lot of different kind of expertise. Um, I guess one good, more tangible, you know, change or development that's happened in the last month or two is DCR did bump up the pay scale for their fire patrol patrolman position, I think it is. And they brought back someone who was tasked solely with, you know, managing the forest and reducing the wildfire risk. So that's a counterpart to the state superintendent. Um, so her name is Karen Le Lathrop. Maybe some of you know her. She's been great out here. She had a great reputation. So a lot of people went to the mat to, to try to make sure that she was brought back when she, when she left for a, a position off island. All right, great. Thanks, Dan. Um, let's go to Steve. And then I saw your hand, Norm, and then Tristan. <clears throat> On the, um, well, well, I, uh, I agree on the precipitation issue, but I think if we don't already really have an understanding of it, they could really help us focus on the state of the aquifer. And uh, I mean, it's it requires real serious science to understand what's happening with it. And it's a regional resource uh, and it's it's going to affect everything really going forward. So I would hope that they could include that as one of the three focused items. So that's something that they don't normally do, um, but we do have both the Army Corps through the Planning Assistance for States grant, which is which will be looking at the aquifer. And then the USGS is also doing an updated um, aquifer study on the vineyard. So we do, we are going, we are looking at that, but we, we you know, we don't need it from Woodwell. So okay. that, is being, that is being done. Um, Norm and then Tristan. No, just very quickly, um, I, I apologize for not being able to participate in a lot of these meetings, but going back to the new governor and the new secretary for climate, um, has there been any thought given to a couple of couple summers ago, we, we had a speaker's panel with Gina McCarthy and Senator, well, uh, in any case, is, is there been any thought given to trying that again, maybe in August, where uh, off-island people are present and we convene uh, another another evening to talk about climate and what the island is up to and what our what our plans are 
Um, no, I think this, I mean, once we get, this is a good segue to goals for 2023 as, as we think about what that is. So let's pin that one. Um, Tristan, go ahead and then we'll circle back to that. <clears throat> Three quick points. Um... By the way, uh, I think Norman, your idea, maybe we could, uh, I was <laughs> looking at Kathy, maybe we can raise money for the fund by having some speakers <laughs> like that come down and kill two birds with one stone or whatever that expression is. Um, second thing was, uh, I, in working here with this group, while I was just listening to talking about drought and stuff, I'm sure we have, but the Water Alliance, and are we doing much with them? And don't they have, they might have some uh data uh i don't know uh i always get their emails but i never have time to go to you know sherry sends out these emails and so maybe that's a resource we should pollinate cross pollinate more with i I'm sure we have i just don't remember us doing that and then the third point just quickly is years ago when i was on martha's vineyard commission and it relates again to woodwell and all these things one of the things also uh Sanford Evans, who was this really brilliant guy who sat on the commission, um, maybe some of you remember him, but, it, you know, in looking at DRIs, he used to talk about microclimates and, um, you know, and what, which mean, which also means that in looking at Woodwell and things like that, um, that when development of any uh, extent is happening, um, how we might best make that development, you know, not only energy efficient, and cl but climate friendly, uh, you know, including its layout, what kinds of uh, plantings, what we need, uh, maybe, you know, parameters on pavement, uh, just because we do create different climates with certain clearing and with certain projects that we do, you know, that are just very localized. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, that's, I think that ties a little bit into heat. Um, and, and, and where does it get hotter and why? Um, so really what we have right now is precipitation, drought, and heat. Are those, are those ones that we feel, and just to give everybody sort of um, some of the other ones that could possibly come up, I'm just going on Woodwells to see if they have a list of things they've done. Um, fires, flooding. Yeah, I mean those are those are the those seem like those are the big ones. Go ahead, Liz. Yeah, it just I just remembered that Adam had gotten grant funding. I I think it might have been from NOAA to look at historical rates of things like precipitation and heat. I'm just mentioning that I think maybe we should check and find out what that grant is about and make sure that what we're asking Woodwell to do is complementary and not redundant. Yeah, good idea. Um, what about flooding? Do we know everything we should know about flooding? I mean, I think it, that comes inland flooding or coastal flooding. Coastal flooding. We did do the storm tides pathway study. So I think that is, is and they did ground troops, a lot of the LIDAR information that they had. Um, so I think, and, and Liz, maybe uh, where is that? Is that study complete now? Have they are they doing a final package for us? It is complete, and I'm I don't know that they're going to be doing a final package. But I'm I'm going to be meeting with um, emergency managers and um, to go over that with them. It, it 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 the way they presented it is strange, and Chris Seidel has been helping me actually understand that how how to how to understand what the way they presented the information. So it's a little bit of a struggle, but the information is there and we need to get it out. Um, we need to get it out. We do. Okay. All right, so precipitation, drought, and heat seem to be the three that we've identified. Is that, is that accurate? We talked about flora and fauna also, but... Um... Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not sure they actually have a if it's part of their risk assessment program and and then they are doing the the flora piece through the other woodwell carbon study to some degree so i think i think really what we're what, what we have is precipitation drought and heat is the three that we've identified as a group 
um, we can see what the how the towns you know support that um, and we'll we'll probably want to set up some sort of working group with representatives from each town whether they're the climate committee representatives or others um, just so that we, so that we can feed back information as we get it all right any other any other things on that otherwise we can segue into goals for 2023 and we can start with norm's concept um, for a summer speaker event um, yeah, it does feel like, you know, we're, we're always constantly needing to recharge on uh, the public and involve them in the conversation. And so, you know, the, the, our first event, we, we hadn't done anything and we just started and now we've done a lot of things. So I think it's both, you know, a status report for people about where we are um, and also a way to sort of build awareness and you know the, the best way to do that is you get some somebody with a with name cachet to to come and speak and that gets people out um how do people feel about doing an event this summer it can be a bit of a lift but you know if we start planning it now it, 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 it seems doable i think it's a good yeah. idea because i think we need to get this feeling out there that the of the island way and i think any ways we can have an opportunity to communicate that to summer people good idea i think it's a great idea and i think in in order to do it we need to find a few thousand dollars to hire an event coordinator so that it can be done professionally and that we don't have to do it as volunteers could could we possibly maybe use do we have we have a little bit in the fund right already maybe that would be i don't know if that's we do Maybe we that's do. appropriate. I don't Maybe know. Yeah. We might be able, that might be an idea. Although yeah. I, I have to say that we pulled it together without too much, would you say this, Ben? Without too much stress. The last Yeah, time. I mean, you know. I hate to there spend weren't, it. There weren't a lot of expenses. I mean, I think, I don't know. I, I had some out-of-pocket expenses. Um, you know, putting Gina up for the night was the biggest expense. When was but, that, Ben? What time of year? That was more like when? That was remember. August, beginning yeah. of August. It was oh, the beginning was of August. Okay, I didn't remember. Yeah, I remember going. I didn't yeah. remember. Okay. If we, yeah. have, is, if, we, if we promised that you wouldn't have to do anything, I mean, I'd be glad to be a point person, not for money like putting somebody up or, you know, or food or something, but for the coordinating stuff, um, I think we could do that. I yeah, honestly, I mean, I, you know, I think um, money spent on event coordinator is a really good idea, especially if we want this to be a fundraising event. I think there are a lot of logistics and a lot of things that need to be done. And, you know, I just, I think it's worth the, the, uh, wasn't there a woman who did climate week? She did. Were... And she's doing climate action day this year too. And she's amazing. Um, the, other, the other thing that we did for that earlier. What did you say, was... Becky? I got a second Liz's comment on that. Julia was a godsend. Um, she took care of everything, and that that left it that um, made it so much easier for us to focus on the things that we needed to focus on. Where she focused on all the little stuff that is so so important to make the stuff run correctly. Uh, I agree with that. For the first event we did, the Carrie McCarthy event, we partnered with the film festival and they did posters and outreach and set up, um, you know, because they, you know, they, they put on those types of events. So I think it's worth thinking about whether it's um, hiring somebody or partnering with a, with, a, with a group that has that ground game already. Um, and then, of course, the other really thing that we struggled with and we lucked out with the West Tisbury School is the location. Right. Um, and that's something you want to lock down early on. Um, you know, we sort of maxed out that auditorium. Um, and if we think about numbers, you know, we have the big, the big sort of spaces of the, the pack or uh, the tabernacle. Um, you know, those may be our, our, what we want to look, look, look towards. I think the pack, because the tabernacle, the acoustics are horrible. 
Yeah. Yeah, and the parking, you know. You know, it was funny. I, I was not a fan when we got the West Disbury School. It was very late in the game and it was all we could get. But in the end, it was actually kind of cool because the parking was good. It was centrally located. You know, it was kind of not too indoorsy. We had that kind of people hung around outside a little bit. Yeah. I thought I mean, the school, I mean, school was good. I was going to say also the waterworks, but might be a yeah. place but uh yeah. need to, it gets booked up fast you know so that's if that's something to look at that, that i know it um the west Pittsburgh school was a good venue though that's for sure i agree well but the point is that somebody has to be responsible for booking things figuring out the transportation the parking all the publicity right. i mean we really need to get somebody working with liz or whoever to really uh, make this happen it's a good idea so how do people feel about doing it again with the film festival? You know, they have they have the ground game, they have the team, they have the audio visual component of it. They could produce posters, they know where to put them up, they know how to get, they have a big mailing list. Um, you know, I, I I would unless we had a, a different idea, I would I would approach them first. Um, and they may just do it as their own promotion. Um, so it's not it's not necessarily costing us. Right, and I'm glad to, I mean, just in terms of time, I know I know there are a couple of people who are really stretched on time, but I really don't mind putting some time into it if we can, if you can save us some money. Yeah, Bob, your hands up, sorry. Yeah, no, uh, just a couple. Uh, the first, building off Kate's comment uh, with respect to um, the Vineyard Way as a brand for CAP, uh, in some ways, I think that's the end game uh, that we're dancing around with respect to this event, which I fully support. Um, however, I see the possibility of this individual being uh, having a larger impact than that, not only with this event, but working to help us co-brand other events with other organizations such as Beach Road. Again, the end game for me is where we are a year from now uh, versus today with respect to recognition island wide of the Vineyard Way and what it means and how it is bringing value today and in the future to the island. Um, a one way to uh, implement that would be to work with the MV Times and the Gazette to do a survey first quarter this year of who recognizes the Vineyard Way, what the percentages are, what it means to them somehow, what climate action means to them, and then do a post survey a year from now. And that would, as set as a goal for 23, I think that would go a long way to telling us whether or not we're actually getting traction on the island. So that's one. The second one is, and this is, again, a little more wild. Um, given all of these wonderful um, studies we have going on, uh, I'd love to see a presence, a permanent presence on the vineyard of one or more of these organizations. Woodwell is currently experiencing hypergrowth. They don't have space for all the people they're hiring. They can't even have them in. I would love us to reach out after finding space on the vineyard to offer Woodwell up office space to actually be based on Martha's Vineyard and have them working and collaborating with us on a near intermediate long-term way. Uh, Bob, just as a segue to what you just said, sorry, Liz, but I wanna say something about you. Um, in terms of how the Vineyard Gazette so far views the cap, they did not mention the cap in their year-end report of 2022, which was extremely upsetting to Liz Durkee. And um, it, it was a strange oversight. So it, the cap is not on their mind, is my thinking. Mm -hmm. um, I A couple of things following up on um, and yes, I was extremely upset. <laughs> um, 
I, I had to calm down um, for a couple of days before I responded to their website. Um, anyway, um, I, I agree. I think the speaker event should be branded as climate action, the vineyard way. I think we need to use that slogan and get it out there in the public. And I think it really, um, it says what we want to say that we're doing this, you know, in, in a way that's appropriate for, for our island community. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I just want to say is I think a panel discussion is more interesting than a speaker. Yeah, I mean, I think we can brainstorm the setup and how we want to go about it. You know, I think it's both sort of a, a chance for us to update an, an audience on what we're doing on the island and then also bring in some really stimulating discussion. Um, so we'll have, we'll have to think about how we want to do that. If we do that, it's, it's easier to do it in a smaller group um, and then they can come back and report on it. But, you know, given how quickly the year will go by, it's really important that we get started on this concept early, uh, even locking in, you know, who the, who the you know, high powered sort of names that are going to bring people out. Um, Norman so was our connection <clears throat> last time. <Yeah. clears throat> Are, so, are you still connected, Norman? <laughs> somewhat, somewhat. I mean, she's left the White House. Right, but there may be there may be some new people that we'd want to bring in. Um, well, I think faces that that can really help our efforts. Maybe so. Yeah, and two things. Um, I could jump in. Uh, hey, Bob, I'm not sure about Beach Road, but if they want to give us money, I'll be all for it. But uh, it, I, it doesn't. Re Anyway, that's yeah, Beach Road other, is a complicated one. That's a, that's a whole other, um, you know, uh, converse, conversation on that. But uh, yeah, I think somebody young uh, also, uh, you know, you, I think it's good to get the, you know, some of the elder leaders of this. Um, but it's the young people here and that are really going to drive this, you know, I'll, I'll be... Uh, fertilizer in the ground you know when when a lot of this uh, is happening so i think it's important that we keep that in mind as well you know and i'm saying when i say young i'm talking 20 you know 25 to 50 you know i mean uh, but you know not having everybody you know my age so if we were to pull a, a couple people together you know said a smaller group that can start focusing on this and working on this does, does anybody have any immediate interest um yes i see kathy, kathy. kathy steve norm okay all right so we can pull a, a smaller group of uh let's say well, i have kathy steve and norm anybody else i don't want to make me all help interested okay and we can figure out so let's set up a meeting in the next week or so um and we can really dive into into, into game planning this out um all right other possible goals for the year. Um, Bob, your concept of reaching out to Woodwell, you know, and it could even be others, and it could be even universities. I mean, there's something really interesting about developing a nexus of climate thinking on the island and providing a space for that. Um, I don't know how to, how to even start that conversation or where, where we would think about it. You know, space is such a premium here. Housing is always the huge struggle, um, but it's an interesting concept as a way to both help, you know, and, you know, is it tied to the schools, right? Is it tied to um, an accelerator program for, for kids in the high school to move into the climate sphere? Um, I think there's lots of benefits that could be here. You know, it, it's a great place to live. And I think people, and that attracts people. Um, and it also offers careers that are not totally tourist oriented or trades oriented, which is what you kind of get locked into on the island. So I don't know how to start that conversation, but it is it is an intriguing idea to sort of flesh out a little bit more. I think it's a good idea, but it has the potential to be a black hole for our energy and, and for resources. Plus, there are other groups that are trying to do something similar, and everyone's got the problem of where you house your staff, um, you know, so I think it's fine, but I think it has the potential for distracting us from the things we've just been talking about. 
Yeah, yeah. and I wonder, you know, if the adult, I don't know, it's not Ace MV anymore, it's called whatever it is it's now. It's MV set, M-V-C-E-T. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think th there's organizations that we could say, hey, hey, here's an interesting concept, you know, we can we can help them sort of understand what we're thinking, but if we could find, you know, others in the community that were willing to take this idea on, um, even the high school, um, you know, I think the superintendent's office should be considering what kind of educational opportunities they're offering. What if you and, began with baby steps? What if you, yeah. like Woodwell's coming in over to um, do their risk assessment, you know? What if we thought of that instead of just like meet you at the ferry and take you somewhere, sort of plan a day to work on it, you know? So like introduce them to, I don't know, there might at the moment be some space at the commission to work in while people haven't returned to work full time, you know, just kind of like begin it a little at a time. So the idea that they're not just alighting for a consult, but actually spending some time here to plant the seed of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there may be space to it, the temporary, very temporary, Martina, kill me, but there, the county also, we have like a whole empty water testing lab, you know. I mean, just to think of ways to bring small groups on some regular basis so that it, 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 it becomes an idea without trying to sell it to somebody. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to float it to Woodwell and just as a concept, you know, as, as they as they think about their, their own expansion, you know, keep the vineyard in mind and that may be a good first step. Um, all right, great. other thoughts? Yeah, did somebody say something? I just said great, Ben. Oh, okay, thanks, Bob. Um, any other thoughts for the 2023 goals uh, besides everything else that we're already working on and of course the cap is our is our sort of guiding light document so there's there's tons in that that are that, that are going to need to be handled this year but and and this the big sell of getting the vineyard way climate change into people's heads i mean i yeah, the constant you know, I sell. Think, yeah. Um, yeah on that on that note, um, the last meeting I mentioned, there was a, a five week course and I'm not endorsing th this oh, course because yeah. I don't know their work well enough, um, but it's a group called Yes and Nature Collaborative. And they sound like they're <clears throat> trying to, you know, hold these sessions to help people more effectively communicate, not in the, maybe um, not in the traditional pit bull style of, advocacy but rather meeting people where they're at um, to ensure they others feel heard, <clears throat> heard when you're you know talking about your particular issue um, I asked them you know could we kind of do a pilot I think Kathy had an idea like you know you know could we test drive one of the sessions where we're all in the same room and see if we like it it's the format is really not structured that way at all it's more kind of breakout rooms and and really some one-on-one -on -one conversations to practice, you know, their, their the approach that they find is, is effective. Um, so I did meet with them and I spoke with them. We went through a little mock-up, you know, and I, I did find it intriguing. That's why I'm bringing it up the second time. They said, if anyone wants to join their first of the five sessions next week, I think they're an hour and 15 minutes, they're $50 each. Um, and, and that person felt, you know, this was worthwhile, they would, you know, they would deduct that registration um, fee from a potential group format session where they structured something just for us. So again, I, I don't know it quite enough about them to give them a ringing endorsement, but I, I did meet with a couple of their, you know, a couple of their um, senior folks and, and it was, you know, I was intrigued. And when is that next week, Dan? January. 13th. Um, I, I just dropped the link into the chat. It has the times on there. I, I forget it offhand. All right. Thanks, Dan. I mean, if somebody wants to explore that, I think that would be that would be a worthwhile endeavor if they have the time to do that. Um, Liz. Yeah, another goal for this year, you know, this climate action task force was um, responsible for getting 
my job established as a climate change planner position at the commission. And I think a goal for this year ought to be to find some creative way to um, fund the salary for a climate communication specialist. Agree with that. Yeah. Um, Liz, also you have floodplain bylaws or floodplain policy and, and bylaw concepts. Is that something that we want to try to move forward this year as well? Um, you mean updating the town floodplain bylaws? Yeah, and just you know, looking at more closely the the by, the the, by, the floodplain bylaws across the towns and where yeah. things you know even even creating a model bylaw. Yeah, and I don't know how much the task force needs to be part of that as much as you know there needs to be a, a certain amount of promotion and, and help. Yeah, Shannon Hulse, the Barnstable County floodplain specialist, has done a lot of work on that, and she's willing to help us. Um, so I think. I think we've we're we're going to have that covered. Although um, okay. we can think about ways the task force can help. All right, uh, Norm. Yes, I, I had just seen some headlines last week that the EPA <clears throat> and the Energy Department um, are going to they're going to have so much money to be spending on climate change, and are we going to be able to position ourselves to identify? what sorts of resources we might bring to the vineyard into this effort. Um, how, do we, how do we manage ourselves in a way that's uh, in accord or can respond to our, our grant offerings uh, on different subject areas? I don't, I don't, this is a very unformed up idea, but there's gonna be a lot of money out there. Are, are we gonna be shovel ready? Uh, can we make ourselves that way? Yeah, it's a good point. We're never shovel ready or shovel ready enough. Um, it always feels like we're a, a little late and 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 unprepared. And and you know, so I think that you know, we talked to Liz brought up funding of a communication specialist. We've also talked about funding somebody that does exactly what you're talking about, which is really hunting down grants and and aligning grant opportunities with, with the work that we're doing so that what we're doing leads to a potential funding source. Norm, do you know the, the EPA uh, kind of network enough to do a little digging? I like, can do a little digging. I know, I still know some people. But, uh, I mean, just to come up with some ideas, because I have a feeling if we could get one or two concrete things we were to get people sort of energized about it, it would create a kind of goal as opposed to this sort of amorphous, like we should do grants, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, well, I'll do some digging. Okay. I have, the, I have the sense that the meetings with with Marky may have been helpful in that regard, right? Ben, you, you guys were talking about grant opportunities with him, with his staff. Yeah, yeah, no, that those were helpful. Um, you know, I think they're leading to some easy, low-hanging fruit. They're we're working now on getting equipment for uh, the state forest um, <clears throat> manager so that they can do better, um, better sort of upkeep of the of the fire lanes, and which is something that they desperately needed and they just haven't been able to get. And so I think that one's an easy one. They were also really interested in the Menemsha, um project because it cuts across in a lot of different uh, lanes. But I think, you know, as we as we learn more about these grants, there's a lot of work that we got to do on our ends to formulate what is exactly what we're asking for and get to a point where they're going to be competitive. Um, there is a lot of money out there, but there's also going to be a lot of people going after it. John, I see your hand. Go ahead. So one of the things that Liz mentioned that I'm working with her on and Megan is to identify a schedule of their specific um, projects, which the CAP lays out. And these projects have a very general uh, funding range. Um, and so that is spending more time and thinking more seriously about what the exact money that we need to, um, to fund these specific projects that the CAP lays out 
and where the funding is coming from, whether it's from fundraising, whether it's in-kind contributions, whether it's town appropriation or state appropriation or federal earmarks, or whether it's possibly from an SSA green pass fee. Um, so trying to get a general organization that we can look at for the next uh, 10 years of where the needs will be and where the funding will possibly come from. And so this project um, is just beginning, um, but um, it may be a good way to identify um, what the needs are and the needs may actually be fairly great. Yeah, that's that's gonna be really helpful, John. That is, that's great that you're taking that on. Uh, Liz. Yeah, um, following up on John's comment, I, I think maybe another thing the task force could do is help us look at this green fee idea or other ideas for how we're gonna do the, the major funding for all these adaptation projects. Yeah, the green fee is a big one. And I know that Tisbury and Oak Bluffs are already, you know, asking the Steamship Authority to up the embarkation fee. Um, and we're going to have to think about how we how we implement a, any kind of green fee. But there's a lot of money that's spent on this island. I was just reviewing the tax returns on meals and rooms and short term rentals and, and you know, a, a small percentage on top of all of that money that passes through the island equates into millions of dollars every year. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else that people have? And, you know, we can always add things. Um, yes, Tristan. Just a couple things more, maybe one's more parochial. Um, the uh, town of Egertown is, uh, has a proposal before the county to take over management of uh Norton Point and where the, the bridge <laughs> and um the trustees have at this point it's in limbo uh because we have a beach nourishment program that's been going on there also there's you know signs of a breach as I think if some of you have seen the photos so it's just something from that's a large area of our coast and just something people ought to be aware of is going on uh whether it's good bad or indifferent i'm not sure <laughs> uh but yeah. but i uh, wanted to mention that and also uh i guess it doesn't directly involve us but it directly involves us i've been going to uh many of these uh, various uh uh wind generation uh wind turbine generation proposals hearings that are going on and uh, you know uh New England wind, which is sort of the second phase of vineyard wind is starting up. Revolution, there's revolution wind, is, there's sunrise wind, there's Mayflower, they all have proposals. Um, they're all closer to us than most people. And I, I still feel what we're getting back out of, yes, nationally, it's a great thing. So I'm not complaining on that level, but uh, locally, I think what we're getting back from all of these proposals, uh, I know there have been like money given to the lighthouse and things like that, but is peanuts and uh, would help if we could access more of it would help us with our efforts in funding, which is what we end up talking about all the time anyway, but uh, there are numerous hearings. I think revolution has one I'm going to go to next week or there are numerous hearings uh, going on with regard to these. I just go and watch not, you know, to see what's happening. It's huge. It's a huge thing for us, for our region. I don't think people yet understand uh, the impact all of this is going to have on Southeast New England, but that's a lot. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So we can we can keep up apprised of, of that and figure out ways we can in, insert ourselves into those conversations. Um, it'd be good to touch base with Richard Andre and Vineyard Power. I think they have they have the the, the most experience now in that in that world. Um, Vineyard, Vineyard Wind did purchase the Packer property. That land transfer has passed through. Um, that's both good for the Packer family because it's going to give them money to be able to pay their debts. And also it's a real signal that they are moving forward on the development in Vineyard Haven. And then there's also a helicopter facility that's you know being developed at the airport. Um, yeah. Uh, so yes, and it, it, this is definitely happening. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know, just circling back to the green fee, you know, 
is the air, is, is there something that we can do through the airport? You know, as people pass through that terminal, is there a gate, a gate charge or some, some way to, to get people that are flying in to pay a nominal amount of money? I think that's worth exploring. Somebody well. said that that's not feasible, but we should double check that. Yeah, I think we just have to, you know, research these things and see where we can, where we can do something like that. I mean, I've flown to places maybe not in the US, but you do pay at the airport some sort of tourist fee. Yeah, you pay when you go to New York. You get there's a fees, you know, that go to the city of New York. You know, so there's you know, they a lot of times they dangle, oh, it's the FFA FAA, you can't do it. But that's I think the 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 best thing there is for somebody here to maybe approach, probably not me, but to approach the airport commissioners <laughs> and have a conversation with them about that. Right. Let them land, but don't let them leave the terminal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, also, um, I, I, I just want to get back to the wind piece. Is I don't know the political piece of this, so I may be stepping in a hornet's nest here, but what if we invited those Richard Andre to our next meeting. I mean, there's so much money running yeah, through. It. What? Yeah, I agree. I agree. And there's vineyard through the wind running. stuff. And in the beginning, when we first talked about it, and we first talked about you know raising money and the Climate Action Fund, it sounded like more of that was going to be funneled over to our side, and it seems to have dried up or been funneled someplace else. But are they not wanting to be well, part of the whole island action here? Well, they're doing, I mean, if I may. No, I mean, yeah. Go ahead, Tristan. So Vineyard One, you know, they have this committee set up and they're, you know, they're, they're that will give money, you know, that there's a set amount of money coming in and every year. Um, and they're using that more for like uh, resilience issues, I think, as opposed to adaptation. Uh, but Vineyard Two is wide open, but also, um, there's money from Mayflower that went to the Cape Lake Compact, and I'm still not clear how we're getting any of that back. Um, there, you know, Revolution Wind apparently is giving some money to, I don't know where the tribe stands with Revolution Wind, but they are giving some money, I think, to the Lighthouse. Um, but again, then there's Mayflower, there's Sunrise, these are all... There's a um, lot of money coming. There's a lot of money, so it's not just the Vineyard, Vineyard Wind. And Richard Andre, I think you're right, we should have him in to talk about uh, then you know New England win now that second half of the proposal uh well the second phase um but Richard you know when you're talking about some of these other proposals Richard really can't you know because of his position I think it's difficult for him to get involved with that right he's he's really tied to the vineyard wind money which is which is in the pipeline um Liz, go ahead. Yeah, the Vineyard Wind money is is earmarked for energy transformation. It's not for any of the climate um, adaptation. That's part one, Vineyard part Wind one. one. Right. So yeah. there's Vineyard Wind two, which is now it's all called New England Wind, <laughs> which, you know, what I don't know what we're getting out of that yet. You know? Yeah, so and, we, and we should advocate to get something out of it. <laughs> and then Mayflower Wind has put their their community benefit money into a couple different organizations. Um, Tristan mentioned one. There's also the South Coast Development Fund. Um, but you know, there's we're we're only a small portion of the South Coast, and so you know they put in I think it's 20 million in the South Coast Development Fund. Um, what portion of that we're going to get out of that is is nil and 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 small if we if we start really advocating hard for it. So I think. We just have to position ourselves better and understand the landscape. That may be where, you know, we talk about hiring somebody, whether it's a funds communication person, a grant writer, or somebody that's, you know, they're tasked with tracking this stuff because you need to be out there. You need to be talking. You need to make yourself known. Um, we don't do a good job of that on the island, unfortunately. I think two two ways in which Aquino was really successful and at least last I heard in leveraging funds from Revolution Wind was one, they were able to, to show that they deserve funding commensurate with the visual impacts. You know, they were far more pronounced to that, to, to the um, view shed in Aquina than they were to other South Shore communities. And two, they, they, they didn't talk about um, a runaway list of priorities that they have and allow the developer 
to say, okay, we'll, you know, we'll hitch our wagon to one of these lower cost projects that you have. They went in with a single project. It, it was a, it was a very, you know, it was a um, big, big price tag and they didn't back off from that. The developer kept asking, do you have anything else that you're working on? Do you have anything else? And he said, no, this is really what, this is what we're, this is really our focus. And I, I believe they were able to um, get, you know, significant funding that way for the light, for a particular project on the exterior. Yeah, part of, of that, lighthouse. and part of that, the lighthouse being on a national historic registry, the, the wind developers are required by law to manage the impacts, the visual impacts on national historic registry. Historic properties, right. So there's, you know, you have to find that nexus, nexus. connection that they're required to meet um, in order to, in order to leverage that. Right. But there were there were historic properties in Chilmark, and yep. Chilmark passed altogether on, yep. you know, trying to track funds down. Yeah. In one of the hearings I was at, I mean, there was minor representation for Revolution. Minor, and I'm glad I know they did get some money. Minor representation. The hearing, couple of hearings I went to, uh, from the vineyard as as opposed to like Newport, which is further away, which had a, like a guy there advocating in a full court press, you know, for their, you know, lighthouse and their facilities. Uh, it was just interesting. They were, uh, now Newport's got more money than us, I am assuming, <laughs> but they definitely, you know, uh, were very organized in their approach. Okay. Yes, yeah, Steve, go ahead. You're muted. Let's put a pin on this. The uh, we can't do it just. It's great that Tristan's going to hearings, but we can't do it just by showing up at hearings. We need to really know the status of each of the proposals and think about what elements of vulnerability they have, what little bit of leverage we might have on which ones, and then we need somebody to go and deal with them before, um, well before the hearings are even scheduled. Did you yeah. just nominate yourself? I'll be happy to work on it, but but we need to have an organized way of thinking through with the towns and with anyone else uh, how we can do it. But it, but I think we can, but we have to move very quickly. I, I agree. We invite I agree. them to come and speak with us. Excuse me. Can we invite them to come speak with us each of these. Yeah, groups? I think we should do that. Uh, that's a very good idea, and and then we can. Try and pick them off one after another if we can. Yeah, you have to you have to identify where your leverage is. We had opened up dialogue with Mayflower Wind when we knew that they were going to be coming in front of the commission and the towns of Egertown and Oak Bluffs conservation commissions um, when they were routing a, a line to Falmouth. Um, Falmouth balked at what they were proposing, and now they're rerouting their line. Uh, to Brayton Point around the south side of the island, and they no longer cross our jurisdictional waters, and that sort of evaporates your leverage almost immediately. So unless they're required within their proposal or by federal or state law to make some sort of community benefit, the only other leverage you really have is if they need local permits. Well, yeah. so, you know, we may be able to um, uh, enlist some state or federal um, officials uh, to to lend in, to lend support to whatever it is we ask for. Yeah, uh, even if there isn't a technical handle. Yeah, much. and even you know Dylan Fernandez and Julian Sears' offices. You know, as as our legislators at the state level, you know, having a sense from them, how are you guys negotiating um, for the benefits of our community? would be a good starting point for them to understand. And, and I know, you know, there's a lot of dialogue between the developers and the state now on the on the, the amount of money that they have to, you know, that the, they the rates that they're going to sell the energy to, you know, we've already seen that in the headlines. So there is potential openings there as well. Um, if they're renegotiating those contracts with the DPU. Uh, all right, that, I mean, this is really technical type of work though. And if, you, if you're not uh, versed in it, you just get lost and you get run over. And so finding the right person 
or persons that can do this is, is I think, maybe the first task that we have. I agree. But even a little money out of that big money would go a long way on our little island. <laughs> so, how I like to look at it. Okay, um, I think we've run out of time for the day. If anybody has any other thoughts, though, on the upcoming year, you know, we can we can fill those in. Our next meeting would be um, February third, and in the meantime, we'll have some we'll have a, a, a group meeting to talk about that August event, and hopefully by the third, we can come back with some more concrete notions about how we want to structure that and get the full group to respond. So. Um, good conversation today. Happy 2023. Thank Onward you, Thanks, Thank everyone. everyone. Thank you all. Happy New Year.